So when starting seeds, how many seeds should you add to a container? One, two, three, or more? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode. What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, like I said, we're gonna answer the age old question of how many seeds should I be starting in a container? Now this question is really common and a lot of people get hung up because they see me sometimes planting three seeds, sometimes they see me planting one seed and then they're like, well, do I start one? Do I start three? Do I start somewhere in the middle at two? Or do I go even more than that? And so I'm gonna answer that question because a lot of people do get hung up on it and to be honest, it varies based on what you're planting as well as a lot of other variables. So the first thing you have to look at is the size of the cells that you're planting in. Here we're starting seeds in a four cell container. So these cells are pretty average size. There's uh, gonna be about 72 cells in this tray here. But what if you're starting seeds in this 200 cell tray? Well, there's 200 cells in the same amount of area. That means the cells themselves are, you know, obviously gonna be much, much smaller. Um, these are only about a half inch by a half inch by about one inch deep. Whereas these are about uh, like one and a half inches by two inches by about two inches deep. So they're quite a lot larger. So there's gonna be less seeds that are gonna fit in this container than this container. And there's even less seeds in this container than in this container. Cause obviously so much more space. So the more space you have, the more seeds you can start. But that's only half the equation because um, if you start in a small cell, but you're planting big seeds, the seeds also should be taken into account. So that's the next thing we're gonna talk about is the size of the seed because that makes a big difference. All right, so when you're comparing seed sizes, this is what makes all the difference. Because if you have this four cell container here, and let's just say the, the three inch pots and the 200 cell containers, let's say they don't even exist, and this is all you have at your disposal. This is what you have. You look at bean seeds and you look at lettuce seed, they're two vastly different size seeds. And so let's say that you, you're working with this uh, four cell container here, and you wanna put three bean seeds in here. Why would you wanna do that? You should not do that because there's not enough room in these cells for three bean seeds. There's just not enough room. If you insisted on putting three bean seeds in, you may have wanted to go with a three inch pot because there's gonna be more soil in here to accommodate three bean seeds. But again, because we're pretending like those don't exist, we're kind of working with a four cell container for right now. So in a four cell container, I would put one bean seed per cell. Now granted, when doing this, you're going to possibly have a chance that that bean seed will not germinate. There's a chance that when you put one seed in a cell like that, that you might have some empty cells. This is a reason why a lot of gardeners like to add multiple seeds to a cell because in the event that they don't have 100% germination rate in that cell, they're not left with a bunch of empty cells and a lot of wasted space because these containers are a premium. They're a premium of space. If you have them underneath grow lights in your, in your grow room, the lights are premium. Everything is really important to maximize the efficiency. But that's why when it comes to beans, I don't like to start them in containers at all. So I wouldn't start beans in containers for this exact reason because in order to start more than two seeds per cell, I would need to go to a three inch pot. And look how much more space I'm wasting with three inch pots for beans. I'd rather just direct sow those in the garden. But I understand that there's people out there that do wanna start their beans early indoors or in a greenhouse like we're in right now. And so you need to know that, that you cannot put in a small cell like this, two or more bean seeds. Whereas with lettuce, the size is so small. And so with bean seeds, you could put two or even three seeds, heck, even four or five seeds, and by the time those seeds germinate, the amount that are gonna be there is really negligible. I mean, the, the amount of space they're gonna take up is very negligible. But that being said, you wanna make sure that you maximize your space, right? You don't wanna waste space. You wanna make sure that you're, you're using your, your trays as efficiently as possible. So what is the right amount? What is the amount that I typically recommend? And that's three seeds. For seeds this small, and also knowing that the germination rate on lettuce is not as high as other things, which we'll talk about, germination rate makes a huge difference as well. But because the germination rate on lettuce is slightly lower than some of the other vegetable counterparts, I recommend three seeds. Now again, you can go four or five, but if all four or five do germinate, it's gonna be a lot of thinning and there's gonna be a lot of, uh, a lot of mess that you're gonna have to kind of clean up so you have healthy seedlings. Because 
in this 200 cell tray here, what we have, we're aiming for one plant per cell in this 200 cell tray. In this four cell tray, you still only want one plant. You're just not going to have to do the whole up potting and transplanting because eventually these are gonna to get too large. We're gonna to have to move these into a tray like this. So basically you're just saving yourself a step, but you still only want eventually one plant to be in this tray here because otherwise you're gonna to be too crowded once those plants start growing, especially in an indoor setting. So you still only want one plant. And the same would apply to a three inch pot. You still wouldn't want more than one lettuce plant in a three inch pot, but that's why you don't wanna go with a three inch pot for starting lettuce seed because it's just a lot of wasted space. They don't, you're gonna have one plant in that three inch pot and you're gonna be wasting all that space just for one plant, it's not really necessary. So um, the size of the seed does really matter and how many seeds you start and how much space they're gonna take up once they start growing also matters. So now we're gonna talk about germination rate, which I kind of alluded to in that last part, but this also makes a really big difference as to how many seeds you wanna start in a container. Because if the germination rate is really high, obviously you have to start less seeds because the goal is ultimately to get one plant per container. So if that's the goal, how many seeds, you know, if you're rolling a dice, what is the odds of getting a certain number, right? So um, if you have a coin toss, right? A coin toss, you have 50-50 odds because it's either gonna be heads or it's gonna be tails. That's like the equivalent of having 50% germination rate, right? Well, what if I told you that the germination rate on something like broccoli was 80%, but the germination rate on the tomato was higher to around 90%. So that means that eight out of every 10 seeds are going to germinate here, whereas nine out of every 10 seeds are gonna germinate here. And of course, this is obviously always going to vary. It varies based on the age of the seed. If the seed is two or three years older, you're gonna to wanna to account for that because the germination rate drops over time. If the seed is a tomato versus a, you know, a, a lettuce, which is more like 70% germination, 90% to 70% is a huge difference, right? So you're gonna to wanna to account for that. Also, uh, you're gonna to wanna to account for just the fact that um, some seeds, depending on the conditions you're putting them in, if you're putting them in conditions that are not ideal, are gonna have lower germination rates. We talked about this, I think two or three videos ago, where you know, warm weather seeds like peppers, right? Peppers like really warm soil. If you put them in cool, damp soil, the germination rate's not gonna be as high. So if you just know that you're putting them out in like a cold greenhouse, you might wanna plant a few more seeds to account for some of those climactic, you know, the, the, or the climate related uh, germination issues. So um, those are some things you kind of want to ask yourself. But when it comes to broccoli, in a container like this, if I want to get guaranteed one seed, I'm going to put two seeds per cell. And the reason why is because, again, we're looking at right around 80% germination. So there's a very good chance that I'm going to have two seeds sprouting in every container. I will have to come back and thin. But if I were to put three seeds or four seeds, that again is, there's, there's so much of an odds that I'm gonna have probably three or four sprouts that it becomes unnecessary. I'm ultimately wasting seed when I don't have to. Now the next thing to ask yourself is, are the seeds really, really small? And when the seeds germinate, will they mind being closely together, right? Like, so some seeds are just impossible to get one seed per cell. Like if you're growing a super teeny tiny little celery seed, right? The odds of getting one seed per cell, even though the germination rate on celery is very high, what are the odds of getting like one seed? Is there any downsides to having three, four or five seeds in a cell? And the answer is no, because you can always go back and thin later. My job right now with this episode is to give you guys the best, you know, the best chance of success with seed starting so you're not wasting space by not having seeds empty with nothing sprouting, but also not wasting seed by just putting more than you actually need to, right? That is the goal of this episode. It's never gonna be foolproof, it's never gonna be perfect, because there are gonna be those outliers, like the really super small seeds where you only would need one or two seeds to put in a cell, but I know that me and my sausage fingers are gonna end up with six or seven seeds just because they're so small. So is this gonna be perfect across the board? No, it won't. But 
Is there other things you can do later on? Absolutely. Like I said, you can thin later on. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you are gonna waste some seed in the process. So like I said, with tomatoes, you're looking at more like 90% germination rate or even higher in some cases. So with tomatoes, and because you get so few seeds per pack, I prefer to start just one seed per cell. I know, I know that a lot of people are gonna say, well, why wouldn't you put two just to guarantee? And again, it's because I trust in the quality of seeds that I'm starting. And I don't wanna just have to come back because ultimately, again, if you're getting three, if you're getting two or three seeds in here and they all germinate, you're gonna to have to thin out to the healthiest one plant. Now, you absolutely could plant two or three seeds, but you have to be okay coming back and thinning. And if I'm not someone that wants to waste seed, in this instance here, I'm trusting in the quality of the seed, I'm trusting in the amount of space that I'm starting in, and I know that one, you know, one plant per container is all I can grow, and this is basically big enough for one seed, and that one seed should germinate, so I'm not gonna put more than one seed in this cell here. Um, and that's just a really, you know, that comes down to, obviously, experience. I know that tomatoes germinate fairly well. I don't need to, to I don't need to gamble with more than one seed because I have full faith that I'm gonna have probably near 100% germination rate in this in these four cells here. So um, when it comes to tomatoes, I only do one seed. If the seed is older, I will sometimes do two. But again, that comes back to the question of, is the seed older? If the seed is older, the germination rate will decline. But if it's brand new, fresh seed, one seed per cell is totally fine. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the topic of multi-sowing. We've done a whole video on multi-sowing and all the benefits of it, but there's certain vegetables that you can plant multiple seeds in a cell because they can just grow closely together. And so um, there's a few different types of multi-sowing. The first one I wanna talk about is beets. So with multi-sowing beets, what we're gonna do is we're going to put about three little divots in each cell. Each divot is going to get one seed. So I'm not gonna put multiple seeds in each divot for beets. I'm gonna put one seed in each divot. So I'm, put, I'm putting three seeds in a cell and I'm not going to thin, believe it or not. I'm not going to thin because multi-sowing is the process of putting multiple seeds in a cell and basically letting them all grow up closely together, knowing that they're gonna be fine with that. Um, and so with beets, what happens is that when you multi-sow a beet, and it grows up, um, it's going to essentially expand. And when you take this whole plug and put it in the ground, you're gonna space the plugs out, still not thinning the plants. And basically as those beets mature, they're going to basically push in on themselves and expand out. So they're not gonna be crowded for space. They could be multi-sewed just perfectly fine, just like this. So that's beets. What's another one you can multi-sew? This one's a little bit different, and that is things like onions. Now with onions, we talk about this all the time, how we will pack down the entire cell. The entire cell gets packed down evenly, so there's no high spots or low spots. We're gonna take the seed and we're gonna sprinkle in these small little four inch cells here, I'm gonna sprinkle something like 10 to 15 seeds per cell, 10 to 15 seeds. Now with onions, you do have slightly lower germination rate, something more like 70, 75%. So you're gonna get maybe out of 10 seeds you put, you're gonna get maybe seven-ish or so to sprout. And so we're gonna put all those seeds in there and then we're simply gonna cover them all up. Now, when they start growing up, are we gonna thin? No, we're not because it's multi-sowing. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically grow them up and then when they get fully mature and ready to move out to the garden, we're gonna pop them out and we're gonna simply divide them out. Now, you would not divide out your, again, you would not divide out your beets because you're gonna plant that whole plug in the ground. It's a different type of multi-sowing. This is multi-sowing for just seed starting when it comes to onions. You are gonna have to space them out once you move them out in the garden. But because the root system is very wiry, they don't get all kind of bound up and, and the, the roots themselves are not very uh, like fine, they won't tear and rip like a normal root would. And so you can basically take them, divide them out, space them out in the garden as you would, but you're saving a ton of space. And then the third type of multi-sowing is with something like herbs. So basil, you can multi-sow, but how are we gonna multi-sow herbs? Well, we're simply gonna make one divot like we would normally, but we're gonna put about three to four seeds per cell. Now I fully expect there to be two or three seeds to sprout per cell. But the thing is, is that these seeds can grow closely together because they don't mind that. 
You can also do this with things like cilantro. You can do this with things like parsley. Um, uh, lots of herbs do not mind being uh, sown closely together. Dill is another one. Um, seeds you really, you know, herb seeds that you shouldn't multi-sow would be things like sage, thyme, oregano. These plants get fairly large. And so because they get fairly large, that would obviously mean that they're not gonna grow very closely together. Whereas like basil, it does get large, but they kind of all grow up together in kind of a, a bush, right? Um, whereas uh, things like sage, sage grows up in a bush, but it's a, it's a huge bush compared to basil, right? Size really does matter when you're looking at uh, those things. Um, and then finally too, like cilantro, cilantro grows up in a little tuft. It doesn't mind being planted closely together. Um, parsley, same thing, it's a little tuft. If you had two or three plants closely together, they wouldn't mind at all. They're buddies, they're friends, they don't, they don't get you know, space hoggy in the garden. Whereas some plants just happen to get space hoggy. So um, that is multi-sowing. And now I wanna talk about big seeds, really big seeds. Now what are big seeds? Well, big seeds, in my opinion, this is just like a, this is an am I gardener quotable here? Cause like there's no definition for what a big seed is, but I've always considered a big seed to be anything bigger than about your thumbnail. So those are seeds, like there's certain bean seeds that I consider to be really big, right? Like large lima beans, like the Christmas lima bean is a huge seed. Um, pumpkin seeds could be big seeds. I just use my thumbnail as a reference. If it's like around the same size or bigger than my thumbnail, it's a big seed. And those are ones that I would put no seeds in a cell. And you might be thinking, no seeds. How are you supposed to start a seed if you're putting no seeds? And that's because I wouldn't recommend putting them in a cell like this. The cells are just way too small. Those are ones that if in an ideal situation you had access to a three inch pot, I would move those to a three inch pot because in a four cell container like this, or even like a 200 cell container, good luck. By the time that seed germinates, the, the, the seed itself will barely fit in the cell, let alone all the roots it's gonna form and all the future growth, it's gonna be way too stressed. So for really big seeds, a lot of times I will simply put those right out into the garden. I'll just simply direct sow them because you're gonna have to designate so much space in a three inch container and again, you're still only looking for one seed, well, one plant per cell here that you're gonna have, you know, let's say this was, let's say this was Christmas lima beans, just for that example. I'm only getting 18 plants. 18 plants is barely gonna fill up, you know, it's barely gonna fill up like a four square foot, five square foot area of our garden. So at the end of the day, I'm not gonna start a Christmas lima bean in this container because the size container that I need to accommodate that big of a seed just doesn't make sense. Now, if I was starting something like zucchini, which is a fairly large seed, I would still kind of maybe lump that into the big seed category. Um, like zucchinis, things like that that you might wanna start early, I would designate that maybe to a three inch pot because it makes sense. You know, a zucchini plant gets so big once you move it into the garden that um, it's maybe worth taking up this much space because one plant will take up like three or four square feet versus the Christmas lima bean. It's just a gigantic seed, but the plant itself, it's pretty compact in the garden. So it does not justify, uh, you know, wasting all this space for a Christmas lima bean, but for a black beauty zucchini, sure. For things like a pumpkin, sure. Cause the pumpkins get massive in the garden and you might want to start them early to get a little bit of a head start. But again, three inch pots, folks, three inch pots. Don't put them in a four cell container or a six cell container. It's gonna be a recipe for disaster and you're ultimately gonna be setting yourself up for failure. So um, that's kind of a loose, kind of quick and dirty of, of how many seeds I put in a cell and how I kind of go through that rationale. Again, there's a lot of criteria. So I'll kind of reiterate, again, we look at the size of the seed, we look at the type of seed, um, we look at the germination rate of that type of seed, we look at the age of the seed, we look at the conditions that we're sprouting them in, we look at the size of the cells that we're planting them in, and we also look at if they're just too big, could they just be directly sown outside with better results so we don't have to waste the space in the, uh, you know, in the, grow room, in the grow room or the greenhouse. And then the very final thing we ask is if they're so small, can they be grown closer together and they don't really mind it at all? And so those are the questions that I ask and kind of how I go through my rationale with how many seeds I plant in a container. I hope you guys learned something. And obviously if you do things differently, that's totally fine too. I just kind of like to show you what I do because a lot of people ask, Luke, 
why do you do the things you do? So in this episode, that's kind of what I was doing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. We're going to get inside because it's cold. All right. Catch you guys later. Grow bigger.